Hello everyone, and before we get to this pony wrap-up show, I just wanted to take a few seconds here with Don to remember and recognize Anders Engstrom, a very dear friend here, a huge component of Valley Access, and we're going to miss him so much, and we just want to thank him for everything he's done for us, um, all the opportunities he's given to us, and all the great work that he has had done here in Stillwater. Don? Yeah, Anders was constantly in our ear, and he'll always be in our hearts. I brought this little blue uh, teardrop here. Uh, it was a, a, g a gift from his celebration of life. He loved the water, and so the blue represents that in the sky, and those were things that he loved. Well, always remember Yonders. Thanks for everything. Yep. We love you, buddy. May the force be with you forever. Hello everybody and welcome to the Pony Wrap-Up show that we have going on here for the Winter Sports Conclusion. A lot of great things happened this season. I'm Pete Winslow along with me is Don Ackerman. Don, a lot of great stuff happened in all the sports this winter. Yeah, we got to witness a lot of it luckily. You saw more than I did, uh, but I, it was been, it's, it's always fun to see all the success that Stillwater has and sports as well as other activities and it was, a, it was a good winter season I think overall in a very tough conference. Yeah, absolutely. So let's dive in. We got girls basketball up first. Don, they were 20 and 8 this season. Yeah. And the last 10, they finished 8 and 2 with a five game win streak. And I mean, it starts with senior Amy Thompson, right? Yeah. I mean, East Metro Girls Basketball Player of the Year. I don't I feel like I don't have to say much more than that. I feel like you're going to be watching her next year when uh, March Madness comes back. Yeah, 25.8 points a game. And she's going to South Florida, from what I hear. Um, and a highlight game this season was an 80-50 to 50 win over Forest Lake, and she accounted for 48 points, Don. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's fun to have those kind of players in, in Stillwater. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that previous record was held by Saris Gallia, who we all know, uh, who had 39 in, in one her leading game. But, yeah, 48, and so absolutely the Ponies are going to miss her firepower. But it was so fun to watch her this season. Um, and she's currently ranked top three of all-time scorers, obviously in good company as Sarah Scalia leads the, the pack there. But, uh, yeah, a Amy Thompson is an absolute force for Stillwater, and she was super fun to watch this season. Yeah, it's fun to look back, but then I think looking forward, you can see that you've got uh, Annika Pepper, 11.4 average. She, sh she was their leading three-point shooter at 41%, so it's exciting to have her. you got a guard like her. She'll be back next year. It'll be fun to watch the Ponies again next fall. Winter. Like we said, they had a great season. Unfortunately, they lost 79-57 to versus Eastridge in the semifinal, and so they were right there. Um, so we absolutely look forward to seeing what they can come up with next season. Uh, I'm sure they've got a great plan and a great roster going forward. Yeah. And then we've got boys basketball now. Uh, they were they had a little tougher road, 13-14. and 14. Like you said, good conference, a lot of good teams in the area. Um, they had a couple of nice win streaks during the season, and uh, on January 3rd, one of their highlights was a big, big 59-57 win over Eastridge. And Jane Jones led with 18 points, and um, they had a pretty good senior core, which they will be losing some players, but um, luckily, junior Henry Zoller led the team with 15 points a game, um, and Brett Hildy, the senior Brett Hildy, led with 10 points a game. So, um, still a lot of good firepower and uh, some really good promising juniors coming up as well. Yeah, and on top of that, you got a freshman, A.J. Tabon, number one. He's coming back too, so it's going to be fun to see, you know, what, what comes next year after, like you said, a rough this year. But building for next year is, is going to be fun to watch. It's going to watch fun to watch the ponies again in the winter. Yeah, it's always tough when you lose the likes of, you know, Lake DeYoung, Joe Hoheisel, Brett Hildy, and some others. And 
I mean, it's just hard when you lose four or five guys that have been kind of around for so long. Um, but I'm, I'm sure Coach Hannigan has a plan, especially, again, these juniors here, Zoller, Fred Cove, Manny Smith coming up. Yep. I mean, there's a lot of fun basketball to be had for Stillwater, so we very much look forward to seeing what uh, Coach Hannigan has with these guys next season. Next, let's talk about boys hockey. 15-10-2, they beat Moundsview 8-2 in the quarterfinals, but they lost to White Bear Lake. Man, White Bear Lake, their constant nemesis. I know. Uh, junior Brody Dustin led the offense with uh, 17 goals, 28 assists, 45 points. That's a nice number. And again, and, you, and I think the thing you, you talked about before we started recording this, junior, junior, junior. So the future looks really bright. They lose a senior goaltender, but they've got three juniors and only four seniors graduating, which after last year, like you said, losing so many seniors, and they were all conference, all state, this is a year in between, but next year looks to be another bright one. You know, I always question, how do coaches cope with losing such a big senior class? It's like, oh man, we've got so much going for us, so much chemistry in the lines, uh, leadership in the locker room, and then all of a sudden, they're poof, they're gone. Um, but I can't imagine how excited Coach Zanon is to see that Dustin, Vanek, and Myers, all juniors, those yes. trio of juniors, leading the scoring in points and goals and assists are all coming back next season. I can't imagine just what we're going to be able to witness with those guys, you know, even getting better. Because um, we've seen all these guys as freshmen, sophomores, um, and they've grown immensely, especially Blake Vanek. Um, you know, he really had his hands in a lot of points and goals last year, but really took the reins this season and really a breakout star uh, along in these two other players, Dustin and Myers. And so it's just so fun to watch them. And I can only imagine how calming it is for Zanin to know that he's got this trio um, and that they're going to be able to work around, you know, all these roster moves. And like you said, only four seniors graduating, Reedy, Kane, Bachelor, and Carroll. Um, and so there's always more talent in the well, I always say. Yes. So it'll be really, really good to see them. Um, and, and, you know, we mentioned senior goaltender Alex Reedy played most of the games 11, 10, and 2 with a 906 save percentage. So he was pretty good all season. Yeah. Um, so we'll be interesting to see, you know, who gets, you know, the timeshare next season. Yeah, I, I mean, next year it's going to be fun to watch hockey. We'll talk about girls in a little bit, but boys and girls hockey at Stillwater, it's just a ton of fun. I mean, the state of hockey, that's where we live. Too much further, and Karkle now sends it ahead. Ponies have number again. Moving in is Dustin, and Dustin scores! Two ends up to the far circle of blast. What a stop there by Sack. Shovel now wide for Vanek. Beats it into Brody Dustin. Now some space in for Myers. Shows the kind of effort these guys are putting out there on the Saturday afternoon. We've got some sports bullet points here that we'll fire through. A lot of other sports happened around Stillwater. A lot of success in different areas. So we had boys swimming and diving done, if you want to talk about that. Oh, sure. Sure. We, uh, Jason Cogler earns All-State two years in a row. He was the MVP. Got second in the state in backstroke, and then was fourth state when the individual medley. So great swimmer there. Again, junior. So you'll get to see him again next year. So yeah, and Stillwater's always so good at the swimming and diving. Oh, my gosh. Um, boys they're and really girls, great. I mean, they're they've great. always a lot of talent, so it's fun to see them. Alpine skiing, seniors, Macy Newbauer and Ethan Stabenow earned MVP awards for the ponies. I've heard a lot of their success. Um, alpine skiing is always very good here as well. So congrats to them. And then in gymnastics, junior, again, junior. Junior. Liberty Quast earns MVP for the ponies as she took fourth at state in vault. And uh, she's had her prints on the uh, success here for gymnastics for a little while already. So great to see that. Yeah, adapted floor hockey. They took fourth in state out of a bracket of eight. 
I didn't get to see how many juniors are on that team, but I'm getting the feeling there might be some. So we're going to have to keep an eye on them next year because they, they got a taste, and I think they're going to want to come back and do better than fourth. Yeah, we heard so many rumblings about the team's success over the season. It was just really awesome that they could uh, really break out. So congrats to them. In girls wrestling, we had Audrey Rogotsky taking third in the state tournament. So congrats to her. In boys wrestling, we have Citadino Tuttle taking second at state. And four ponies earning medals for wrestling. And so obviously, you, we've seen it before, wrestling has always had a really good place here at Stillwater. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, we, we've just covered a couple of the activities, right? There's still a lot more happening at Stillwater High School. But I mean, you're talking about state, 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 right? And, and, and in a very tough conference, it's really impressive to see how many ponies are succeeding. Frieden Nelson who fires one in and scores. The ponies looking to pressure that freshman in goal and get a chance out in front and they score. times and St. Martin has been in this program scoring goals since eighth grade as there's a shot from the near circle goal for Josie Lang. Eighteen, nine, and one. And boy did they have a good run this season, Don. Oh man, they did. I know that you know, Josie St. Martin, one of her goals was to get to the state tournament. This section, it is tough to do, and they fell to Hill Murray 5-2. to two. Yeah, I mean, they had a six-game winning streak during the season, and in that six-game winning streak, they only surrendered four goals on that run. <laughs> yeah. Senior goalkeeper or goaltender Lily Timmons was an absolute force, an absolute stud for Stowater, I mean, all her years that she's played. Um, and then, obviously, the offense starts and ends with Josie St. Martin along with that big, powerful line of uh, Brooke Nelson and Bryn Lasko, who stepped in actually yep. um, as a young player. But Josie St. Martin, 26 goals, 39 assists, 65 points, and also the East Metro Girls Hockey Player of the Year. So, I mean, what else can she do? What else could she do? I mean, honestly, any pony can do that. It's just impressive to see the talent that they have. Yeah, I mean, again, Nelson, 55 points, Lang, 50 points, Finn, 43 points, and then, like I said, St. Martin, 65 points. Not a math whiz, but that's a lot of points between <laughs> all those seniors. That's a lot of points in a very, like I said, a tough conference. You know, I think when we talked to Coach Cashman during the year, she said if these guys were playing out of the state, they'd probably have twice as many points because of how good they are. Oh, I believe it, especially with all that talent and just the chemistry that you saw. I mean, Let's talk about the two Josies. I mean, they knew exactly where they needed to be, yep. especially on that power play. How many times did we see Josie to Josie on the power play? Yeah, and, and I think that's the funny part when you we were talking about all the juniors earlier. When they have all that time together, it shows up and you can see it. It's so clear and you can you can see how that chemistry pays off. So that's that's exciting to see how they're gonna build. And I know that Stillwater has more ponies that are ready to step up, and I think that's gonna be the fun part for me to watch next year. And I mean, I looked it up, 13 seniors yes. graduating. Um, so that is, I mean, that's half the team. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you're looking at it, we talked about a name, Bryn Lasga, yep. who has absolutely stepped into that front line uh, this season. And that's a lot to ask when you're playing between Nelson and St. Martin. For sure. Um, There's also a lot of opportunities. So now she has to be the spearhead for the next group. Yeah, I mean, I thought that she did so well uh, and very noticeable when she fit right in. When we watched all those games, I mean, you know, I feel like we saw a lot of line jumbling just to try to find kind of the perfect mix that that last little part of the equation, I feel like. Yep. And she absolutely brought it um, and put some goals in 
and was a really big proponent of that offense, especially when you got to play center yep. on the top line and one of the top, uh, you know. Well, you're facing here. the top lines in the Ex state too at the same time. Exactly. So, um, like we said, 13 seniors graduating, but Bryn Laska and a couple others have shown really well that they're going to be able to uh, take the reins over and, and not really miss a beat. Um, so that's going to be really awesome to see next year yeah. uh, when we cover these games. And different from the from the boys, the girls have a freshman goaltender, and she showed she started in many games, and we saw her play a very solid season. Haley Solnitsky, she's she's someone to keep an eye on as well. Yeah, and actually that brings me to the next point, Don. Maybe the most memorable game for me this season was one we called where it was a six-six tie oh. in overtime against Woodbury. And I thought that game was over. And if you if you missed the game, folks, I mean, first of all, I apologize because you missed a great one. It's it's on YouTube. You can yeah, watch it. Yeah, you can go back and watch it on the Valley Access YouTube channel. <laughs> yes. But Stillwater trailed 4-1 after that first period. And unfortunately for senior goaltender Lily Timmons, it just wasn't her night. That just right. happens. Well, there were some goals, some shots that were just spectacular shots that she could do nothing about. And you could see that I think that it had gotten to her, right? I remember watching that game and looking. She looked at the coach, and the coach looked at her, and she's like, uh, it's, not, it's just these guys are killing me today. It's just not my night. And uh, they swapped out the goalie. And Solnitsky came in, freshman Solnitsky, yep. 21 of 23 saves. And by the time it was all said and done, I mean, they had taken the lead at one point with about, I don't know, just under a minute left. Oh, yes. And it was like three power play goals. All the seniors stepped up and brought the game back. When again, a lot of teams, when you're down four to one against a really, really good Woodbury team, would have just said, you know what, we'll move on to the next it's not, one. It's not happening, right? It's not our night. Sorry, guys. And uh, unfortunately, they gave up a goal that tied it at six uh, right before the game ended, but then it went into overtime and no one scored. But still, I mean, that was such a memorable game. And to me, it kind of illustrated just how gritty this team is and that they had so much depth because, again, for a while, the, the top guns weren't doing the offense. They weren't producing, but we had some contributions from other players that yep. really stepped up. And then, you know, as the game went on, the St. Martins and Lang and Finn and uh, Nelson really, really took the game over. And so I just wanted to highlight that game because that was just an absolute uh, trip for us to <coughs> call it. Right, yeah, because yeah, you could feel the crowd too getting into that one because it just it, they were they had some great goals early. None of the goals were fluky or anything, so it wasn't like you could blame that. And to have that comeback was, you know, I, I honestly at that time I start thinking, is this the year, right? And it's so much fun to be able to think that um, when you're when you're watching a team play, is this the year that it, that 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 they, that they get to put another one up? at the end of the year, uh, and I think that's always the goal. If you're not watching, the, if you didn't watch last year, make sure you tune in next year because I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to watch Valley Access. Yeah, so with that, that kind of wraps up everything we wanted to talk about with the winter sports here at Stillwater. Thanks for joining us and thanks for tuning in to all of our coverage uh, and keep following the Pony Sports here as we transition into the new season, but always check out our stuff here on Valley Access Channels TV. I'm Pete Winslow with me, Don Ackerman. Thanks for joining us.